Welcome to Beacon Church, a light to our neighborhood, a beacon set on a hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news in Answell and wherever he places us to live and work. We are here to demonstrate to others the good news of Jesus Christ. To restore life, rebuild community, and build up the body of the church in love so that all are actively involved in the task. Go, be fruitful, and multiply. Morning, church. Morning to people here, morning to people at home. Um, I'm just going to open up in prayer, and then we'll get on with it. Father God, I just want to bring this service to you, Lord. I want to bring it back to you. Everything about this service, Lord, will be acceptable to you, whether it be the music, whether it be the, the word, Lord, and our hearts as well, Lord, that you will read our hearts, and you know they are for you, Lord, and no one will leave this place in the same way. Amen. Amen. So it's a World Cup today. There's... There's been a lot, it's been tarnished a lot by a lot of these protests going on about LGBT rights and things like that. And this is human morality. Because it's not that long ago in this country that things like that were illegal. Because human standards change like the wind. Let's do, I just want to read this to you. It's been on my mind. It's just the first five verses of First Peter. For as, chapter 4, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he hath suffered in the flesh, have ceased from sin, that he no longer should live, in, live the rest of his time in the flesh, to the lusts of the men, but to the will of God. For the time has passed of our life may suffer, suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in love, I can't remember that word, <laughs> Word in lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them in the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. They think it's strange that we don't act like them. When you're at work, for example, or when you're in the street, people see you're a Christian. When they know you're a Christian, it can actually make them uncomfortable because the light of, that shines through us exposes darkness. We are supposed to be salt, salt of the earth, an active force in a corruptible world. The world talks about morality. It doesn't know morality because worldly morality changes all the time. People talk about Black Lives Matter unless it's in the womb. When abortion is used as the last form of contraceptive, how can you say lives matter? People talk about women's rights in a society when we don't even know how to define what gender is. Now they teach you can be whatever you want. You can choose to be a man or a woman. It's just madness. How did we get to this? We have guided missiles fired by misguided people. But we don't live by these standards. They think it's strange that we don't follow them, but we live by these standards. We live by the standards of God. And they say, oh... You need to catch up. The church needs to catch up with our times. No, it doesn't. God doesn't change. They need to slow down and get back to morality, get back to biblical morality. Christian services in schools, a good luck. This standard, if everyone followed this, there would be no need for guided missiles, no need for war. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. If people followed these standards, there'd be no need for missiles. There'd no, be no need for war. There'd be no need for any of this kind of thing. But they don't because they want to live in their own sin. Everyone's doing what's right in his own eyes. And if everyone's doing what's right in his own eyes, no one's going to agree with each other. This is the only standard we need to follow. I know it's human nature to try and fit in. Human nature to try and be comfortable. But we're called to be different. We're called to set the standard, to show what the light of how you're supposed to live, how you're supposed to live for God. It's time this country came back to biblical morality. 
And the God that gave these, these standards, we're going to celebrate him now through music. So I'm going to ask Serena to come down. Who, you're not leading? Oh, sorry, Nathan. <laughs> I'm going to ask Nathan to come down and Serena <laughs> to lead us in, in praise. Thank you. Glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King. Rise among us, let it rise. We sing, oh, 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 let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Sing, let the songs of the Lord. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Sing, let the songs of the Lord. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Sing let the songs of the Lord. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King Rise among us, let it rise. Who sing, oh, 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 let it rise. Oh, let it rise. 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 
let it ride. We said let it ride. Let it ride. Let it ride. Let it ride. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Sing, let, let it rise. Let, let it rise. Glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Glory. The Lord, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Glory of the Lord, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Glory of the Lord, let it. Greater than it all. greater 
Lord, I believe you rose again. So I don't believe this is the end. You never fail, you have a You hold within your hands. So I walk by faith and not by sight. For you are my source, you are my light. In you I live, I will not die. You've stretched these wings, now I can fly. Cause you are great. You are greater, Jesus. You are greater than it all. Cause you are great. You are greater, Jesus. You are great. Shall bow 
alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of 
God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross where Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I That was great. I like the one where the blood of Christ is greater. It is. It's greater than COVID. It's greater than our circumstances. It's greater than any troubles we face. It's time for the Sunday school, I believe. Are there any children in here today? <laughs> I can't see any. Unless any older people want to go. <laughs> I don't have to have biscuits and crisps and whatnot. So I'll just pray for them as they leave. And I'll also pray for Tim. He's going to get prepared for his word. Father God, just be with these little ones, Lord, as they go to learn your word, Lord, and let them take it into their hearts, Lord, that they will learn something from this, that they'll be able to not just learn today, but to carry with them throughout their lives. Father God, I also want to put Tim before you now. He comes prepared for the word. The word is prepared, Lord, that it will be from you, Lord, from your heart, just like through Tim. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, Tim, you ready? <coughs> Thank you. And um, yeah, welcome, welcome back to a number of people today. It's lovely to see Theo and Ingrid there. Amen. It's lovely to have you with us. Fantastic to see you waving the flag as well, Ingrid. I missed that very much. I just haven't got the skill that you've got <laughs> to wave the flag. Uh, 
And, um, and also, I understand Casey. Casey's here. Casey, the daughter. And where? Okay. Um, just a note from Veronica. But welcome. And um, welcome anyone online. If you've uh, not been with us before, it's so good to have you. Please do um, just give us a greeting by typing in a greeting in the, the live chat. It would be so nice to know that you're there. And join in with any answers to questions that are, are given during the, uh, the service or, or any thanks you want to give to God for the things that he's doing in your life. Um, we'd love to know that on the chat so that you can join in with us more, more sort of interactively uh, online. Um, and, and also welcome Pat. Pat's here today, and, and it's lovely to have you, but I know that it's not, not an easy time because um, you guys have lost a, a cousin, an auntie here, um, and I'm just following Veronica's notes. But anyway, we're, we'll pray for you later on. Um, yeah, so let me just uh, get back to what we're doing this morning. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the love that you've lavished on us day by day and week by week, month by month, year by year, that we are actually here today to praise you. Thank you for those words in that song that, you know, no, no fear in death, no fear in death or in life with you in our lives. Lord, we want to live up to that. We want to live up to all the promises that you've given us in your word. Help us to understand as we listen to it today. Help us to see what you're saying to us personally and to us as a church. Touch our hearts, Lord. We need you. We need your Holy Spirit just to come and open up our, our spiritual understanding, open up our hearts to understand what you're saying and how we can live with you in our lives. So, Lord, we rely on you. We come to you as we have in worship we come to you now with the same attitude to listen to your word. So Holy Spirit, speak and have your way amongst us. As we've sung, let your glory rise here. Be glorified in us. May what we think and what we do as a result of today bring glory to you. Show other people how great you are and what a treasure we found in knowing you. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. This morning, um, the word that God's put on my heart is from uh, Colossians chapter 1. And it's, um, it's something we've been over in the last year, I know, but in a different way this morning. The theme that I have on my heart that was really so strong as I was preparing was uncomfortable discipleship. Uncomfortable discipleship. The challenge in God's word for every one of us who calls ourselves, call ourselves a, a disciple of Jesus to remain faithful to him, to keep walking in his way. And we don't like doing that. We don't like thinking about that challenge to remain faithful. But it's there. It's there throughout the Bible. It's there throughout the New Testament. It's there throughout all the letters and the Gospels to remain faithful to him. It's really, really important. I'm also going to be looking at um, the first chapter of um, Second Peter, but we'll show that on the screen when it's, when it's time. So let's have a look at Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to read from um, verse 9 through to verse 23. I want you to look for a verse in there. Um, it's the verse that is really it's 20, verse 23. When we get to it, uh, I'm going to say it now, but it'll be a bit out of context. Verse 23 says this, these things. At the end of our reading, it says this. If, indeed, you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. So all the things we're going to read and the promises that we're going to hear about and the stuff it's going to, we're going to go, yeah, God, that's great. You've done that for me. That's brilliant. At the end of it, Paul has this little caveat, this little thing that says, if... Indeed, you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. Okay, so let's, let's read through from verse 9. 
And so from the day we heard, we've not ceased to pray for you. That's the people in the town of Colossae, the uh, church in the town of Colossae. We've not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. What for? For all endurance and patience with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. You've seen that word, that phrase quite a bit here, all things. It's a very sweeping statement. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him... All the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body his body of flesh, by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation, that's to all people, under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Okay, you can see lots of promises in there and lots of wonderful truths about who you are if you're a follower of Jesus or what's promised to those who decide that they want to receive Jesus into their lives and follow him as his disciple. A whole load of promises. So I think that when Paul says, if indeed you continue, that he probably thought that on balance these people were, were going to carry on. They were, they were going to be faithful because he says at the beginning, doesn't he, that oh, we haven't stopped giving thanks for you. You know, we're, we're really sure that God's going to, going to do so much and we're just praying that you'll continue. But it's still a challenge and he still felt it was crucial to warn them that all these wonderful things that you've inherited in Jesus, well, they depend on you carrying on with him. They depend on you remaining in that stable, steadfast place and not drifting away. There's a, a very similar thing um, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1. And don't bother bringing it up at the moment, um, Entenda, but we'll look at it a bit later. But in, 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 in 2 Peter, um, he, Peter says a number of times in several chapters, you know, so long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep on writing to you like this to stir you up so that you carry on in your faith to stir you up, because I don't want you to miss out, basically. He says uh, in 2 Peter 1, verse 12, Therefore I always, I intend always to remind you, uh, remind you of these qualities, the things that um, are involved in being a Christian, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I'm in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder. And he talks there about how um, all of us, have, um, if you like, a calling to confirm the invitation 
that we received from Christ to follow him. As if it was an invitation that you'd received from someone else. I don't know if you've ever had an invitation to do something and you've remembered too late that you had to do it by a certain date. Anyone ever done that? It might be an RSVP. Yes, yeah, Steve's done that. Anyone else? It's just me and Steve? No, no. Okay, so Susan as well. Maybe if you're online, just type in something that if you want to share with us that you've done where you didn't respond in time to something and the, and it, and the date ran out. Um, I, I did this and I can't remember what it was, but it's stuck in my mind. I had an invitation to go to an event and, um, and I didn't think about it until after it finished, a week after. You know how you just get an email? And you know what emails are like? They go down the list as new ones come. If you don't deal with them, you don't file them or sort them out, don't they? And so this email had disappeared onto page three or page four of my email list. And it was only afterwards that I realized, no, I've forgotten. The other thing that I've done twice now is, um, have you ever had a DBS check for your job? Lots of people have a DBS check for their, their job. Um, and you, you get all your details sent away to be checked um, for your, your criminal record, to be checked for um, whether you're suitable for working with the type of people, vulnerable people, usually, that you've applied for a job for. Um, or, as over the years, uh, Veronica has um, probably done a lot of DBS forms for people here in Beacon, if you're working with children in Sunday school, or you're working um, generally with vulnerable adults and older people. And so um, several times I've heard and then forgotten until it was too late that if you want to be able to um, reuse that DBS check, then you can register it online, can't you? Anyone else done that as well? And you get to like a week after the date has gone. You only get about two weeks to do it, two, three weeks. They've been a bit more lenient recently to register your DBS check online so that come another year or another up to two years, is it? But within a certain time period, you can actually go, go online and prove or your, um, your employer can go online and prove that you, um, and you can get it up, you can update it, can't you? So you can have it again to show to somebody. Twice I've done that, and both times I was so annoyed. But I'm not sure what Veronica thought, because she had to fill in another form for me um, within a short space of time. It's terrible when that happens, isn't it? And that's a bit like what it's like when Peter, actually, and, and Paul are talking about responding, going on with Christ. Peter especially puts it that way. Um, he, he says it's, it's like confirming your calling. 1 Peter, uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 10 Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. And he's calling on them. The people he's writing to is calling on them to, um, to actually do what you're meant to do as a Christian. And he lists several qualities there in chapter one, which we'll look at later. So if Paul felt it was crucial to warn people. And in this season, it's a season of challenge. I really believe it's a season of challenge for us uh, as Christians in the UK, maybe in the West. Um, after all that's happened with COVID, after all that's going on in the world at the moment, Chris alluded to some of the things that are happening at the moment. It's a season of challenge. Will you take up your cross and follow him? Will you carry on the way that you started? It's, it's weird, really. Christian discipleship begins with a challenge. And what's that challenge? What did John the Baptist come to preach? And what did Jesus preach at the beginning of his ministry? What was the simple, simple message? Repent. It's, it's, folks, it's time to change. It's time to turn around. It's time to stop doing the things you shouldn't be doing. It's time to make room in your heart, make room in your life so that the kingdom of God can come, so that you can receive Christ as your Lord. It's time to make room. And that's what John the Baptist came to do, isn't it? He was fulfilling the prophecies in Isaiah. The voice of the one calling in the wilderness makes a straight path for the Lord. Make straight your heart. And what John preached was bear fruits in keeping with repentance. So he told people to repent and be baptized. But what he preached was bear fruit in keeping with it. It's no point coming to me and getting baptized, he said to the Pharisees, basically, um, and the religious people, didn't he? You brood of vipers. 
He says, no good coming and doing this. You've got to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. You've got to show that you truly have turned around and begun to change things. And John preached very simple things. Some people say, well, what have we got to do, John? What have we got to do? What, what does this mean in practice? And he said, well, if you've got two coats and, or two jackets then, uh, and there's someone who needs one, give them one. You've got one already. And he told the, the Roman soldiers, didn't he, stop, stop exploiting people. And the tax collectors, stop taking more money than you should. Just, you know what you need to do. Whatever it is in your life that's not right, it might be a simple thing just that by sharing what you have with other people and not hoarding it for yourself because you know you've got more than enough. Very simple. But there needs to be a change. And Christian discipleship involves ongoing uncomfortable change and challenge to be the person that God designed you to be and me to be, doesn't it? We're continually told to give up our treasure for his treasure. Like the parable Jesus told, as we've got recorded in one verse about the man who went and found treasure in a field, just digging and sold everything he had in order to buy the field and then went and dug up the treasure and claimed it for himself. That's what it's like becoming a Christian. You discover something so wonderful in Jesus like we were singing, he's greater. Jesus, you're great. is he greater in your life than all those other things outside? That's what we were singing. That's how we praise him. But is he truly greater than the other things that are pulling you for your time and your energy and your commitment and your loyalty? The other things that you perhaps don't want to give away or give up, which might stand in the way of you following him. We read from, um, from Colossians chapter 1 how Paul prayed for these people. And uh, he, he says, from verse 10 really, but from verse 9 he says, so we haven't stopped praying for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. These are all ongoing things, aren't they? Bearing fruit, walking in a manner worthy of the Lord, being strengthened with all power, increasing in the knowledge of the Lord. We're not supposed to stand still. This is a walk. This is a movement happening in our lives. So if you're standing still as a Christian, as a disciple, then this is a warning. This is a, a wake-up call for you. It's time to get walking again. It's time to start bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in your knowledge of God, of getting back into his word, of getting back into the things that he's asked you to do. As you received Christ Jesus, Paul said, so walk in him. That's actually chapter 2 of Colossians, verses 6 to 7. So walk in him. As you received him, in that same sense of the costly commitment of turning to Jesus, of beginning to bear fruit for him, of putting aside your treasures to take hold of his, that's the same way we're supposed to walk. So test yourself. Now, um, we should do that regularly. There's lots of different health tests you can do for yourself regularly. Do we do the spiritual health test? Are you walking worthy of him? Doing what's fully pleasing to Christ in your life? Are you bearing fruit? in your life. You only have to think of some of those things that are mentioned as fruit of the Spirit. Is that me now? Am I bearing that fruit? Is there something to show for my life of what I've allowed the Lord to do through me? Or am I standing still? Am I increasing in knowledge of God? Am I able to say that all the things that I do, I can safely do them in the name of Jesus? Or are there some things that I can't associate in my life with Jesus? It's good to test yourself. 
And it's not about how good or how knowledgeable you are or how hard you're trying. Because we could be, become disconnected. We can come, become disconnected from Jesus. And we can then think, well, I've got to try harder. I've got to try harder. The preacher's always saying from the front, are you doing this? Are you doing that? But it's not about trying harder. It's about your relationship with him and whether you are still walking with him. So walk in him, he says in chapter 2, verse 6, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, um, just as you were taught. Walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught. We need to maybe go back to the things that we were taught. We need to remember and return to the things that we've lost. There's um, that wonderful passage in Revelation 2 um, where we've studied it before, where um, Jesus basically says to the church, you've abandoned your first love. So remember what you did at first and come back to it. It's not too late. It's not too late to start walking again. As you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Get going again. Maybe what we need to do is to simply refresh that relationship with him. Because it's not about working harder, but it's about knowing him better. If we just work harder, we're going to wear ourselves out and we may go off at a tangent without actually knowing the Lord, doing the stuff we're doing with no reference to him. People who... Um, as it says elsewhere, are people who uh, maybe show on the outside something that looks like being a Christian, but on the inside are dead. So why not come back? Come back to passages like this one in Colossians where Paul talks about who Jesus is. I, I spent quite a bit of time meditating on those verses, verses 15 to 20, um, all about who Jesus is. And it's those kinds of things to refresh your mind about what is this treasure that I said I was going to follow him for, that I was going to leave everything else behind to take hold of. What is this treasure? Who is this Jesus? And by meditation, I don't mean sitting there and trying to empty your mind of everything so that it's blank. That's, that's kind of, that's very yoga-like. Um, that's a different kind of meditation. Christian meditation is different to that. It's about filling your mind and your thoughts with the word of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you what that word means, being established in it so that it comes alive as you worship him, as you meditate on that word. So I, you know, I, I would often do it like this. And as I meditated on this passage, Colossians 1, 15 to 20, I, I meditated on it by splitting up, and it's the way that I work. You might draw it. You might pick a word or two from it and just think about them and what they mean, or a sentence and think about what it means. Um, and, and I just split it up so that I've got it spread across a whole page so I can see all the different things about Jesus listed, of who he is, the image of the invisible God. At last, we know what God is like. As I was meditating on this passage, that's what, that's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He's the image of the invisible God. At last, we know what God is like. He's not invisible anymore. He's not far away and judgmental and covered by the clouds anymore. He's good. He's lovely. He's merciful. He understands me. He's the God who sees me and knows me and has experienced everything that I've experienced. He is the image of the invisible God. And I just praised him for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's who you are. And there's enough in there for you to... Pray and worship him for a good half an hour in that one statement. And the other things that it says there, that, that he's the firstborn. It doesn't mean that he was somehow created like everything else, but he's the, the, the word firstborn is used as a title for the one who's in charge, the one who has the right to be in charge of the family and uh, to have the, the prime inheritance. The firstborn, so he is the one in charge over all creation. He's the one through whom everything was made. 
whether it's visible or invisible, spiritual or physical, whether it's things that you can see or you can't see, whether it's the, the governments and the powers that are causing chaos in the world right now, or whether it's the invisible spiritual rulers and authorities who are behind them and trying to drag them down into destruction, whether it's the rulers and authorities who are trying to make your life a mess and whom you know you're in a battle with, or whether it's a person that you're having difficulties with. Everything and everyone was made through him and for him. He's before all things, and in him all things hold together. And again, that, that expression, all things, came to me as I was meditating on this. It says it so many times. Um, all things were created by him. All things were created through him. He's before all things. In him all things hold together. He died to reconcile to himself all things, making peace by the blood of his cross. He is Lord. Everything's made by him. He has authority over everything. And if you're in him, you're with him, seated in that place of authority with him in the heavenlies. Oh, I could go on. I'm not going to go through my meditation. That was my meditation on the word. But it's things like that help us to get back to that place we should be in. When Paul wrote to the Romans, he reminded them that they needed to allow their minds to be renewed. Allow their minds to be, we need to allow our minds to be renewed after the image of God in his way of thinking, his mindset day by day, by taking the word of God, coming back to it, to fall in love with him again, to fall in love with the one who made it all, to recognize that he's all around us, to recognize that everything I touch, everything I smell, everything I see, bears his imprint and he is causing it to exist and sustaining it and has a purpose for it and that he loves me that he loves me that he gave his body of flesh for me that he took me those promises that he has given us in his verses are truly wonderful aren't they truly wonderful he says this Paul says this as he uh, encourages these people. He says, you've got to give thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In light. You've been qualified by God the Father to be his child, the one who's going to inherit the kingdom of God. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. He's delivered us. You are delivered. You are qualified. You are delivered from the domain of darkness. You are transferred to the kingdom of of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption. You are redeemed. You are forgiven. These are all his promises, which are so rich and so beautiful. And think of this in, in verse 21 to 22. He says, you. This is because Jesus died to reconcile to himself all things, whether on heaven and earth, making peace by the blood of his cross. As you. You, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. In order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith. What a promise. What an amazing thing. So Jesus was reconciling us to him by the blood of his cross, by his life given for us. I want you to think of somebody that you would not ever want to meet, somebody who should be denied um, a visa to come into this country. I think of a lot of people like that, that we wouldn't want to have here because of their violence, because of their radicalism, because of the people that they have beheaded and killed and have tortured and have destroyed. And you know that there are lots of people like that. There were people who went to Syria from this country to fight for ISIS and who were not allowed to come back. And they're living in no man's land, basically. The things that they did mean that we know that they were hostile in mind towards, or would be hostile in mind towards us, especially us as Christians, hating us and wanting to take our lives wanting maybe to make us into second-class citizens who have no rights should they be able to take over our country. 
Would you be willing to take somebody like that into your house? Would you be willing to write a reference for someone like that? To say, yes, this is a wonderful person. They'll be great for this job. You know what? Paul is saying you guys are the same. You guys are just the same. You were alienated from God, hostile in your mind, hostile in your mind towards God. You did not want to do what he wanted you to do in life. And so many people are like that now. They're hostile to God. They do not want to hear. It's the same as Chris was saying earlier. People don't want to know. They don't want to see the good in you because it makes them feel, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to know God. I don't want to know anything about God. That was how we were. And what did Jesus do? By dying for us, by giving us new birth, by forgiving us for all of that, by allowing us to see how wonderful he is so that we could say, I don't want that anymore. I need you, Jesus. I need a mindset change. I need to be born again. I need to be washed by your spirit. I need the new creation in me, Lord. I want to become part of your family. So that he made you and I, took us from that place. That's what we were like, doing evil deeds. And he's, because of what he's done, because he gave his perfect life on the cross, he can now take you, he can take Chris. Chris, come up here a second. He can take Chris. He's a man who was once hostile to God, alienated from him, hostile in his mind and doing evil deeds. Is that you? It's all of us. It's all of us, Chris. It's okay. It's all of us. But he's given his life to Christ. He's received Christ into his life. He's been born again. So Jesus can now say to the Father, look, here's Chris. Here's Chris. And you know what? Let's get this verse right. I'm going to present him to you. He's holy, you know. He's blameless. He's done nothing wrong. He's, he's, he's above reproach. He can come into your presence anytime. He can come into our presence, Father, anytime. It's all gone. Can you imagine being changed like that, being accepted like that? There you go, Chris. Thank you. But that's what, that's what Jesus has done for us. Do we value it? Do we want to carry on with what he's given us? Do we want to keep walking in that way? Because that's the challenge in this, this verse, isn't it? Have a look at 2 Peter chapter 1 sometime. There's um, other, other things you can look at. Um, that show us what we should be aiming for. So he says, make every effort to supplement your faith with, and he gives a list of things that we can hold up as things we should be aiming for in our life. Uh, he too warns us that whoever lacks these qualities, some of the qualities that Paul's talked about, is so short-sighted that he's blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. We need to refresh and renew ourselves in Christ, don't we? And we need to recommit to him. And the rest of, almost the rest of Colossians, that letter is about what it means to recommit to Jesus, what it means to put off the old life and to put on all the wonderful new qualities of life, that it, what it means to be a Christian. Generally, and in your family and in your work life, everything. That's what Paul talks about in the rest of his letter. So there's something you can meditate on. A bit later on. Let's read those few short chapters. Let's pause. Let's be quiet for a moment. Let's pray, shall we? Are you walking? Are you still walking this road of faith? Does it feel at the moment that maybe you've, you've sat down at some stage and you're not still on the path? Maybe you just slowed down quite a bit. It wasn't meant to be like that. Do you want to renew your walk and your relationship with Jesus? Do you want to get up and start going again? If you're hearing this for the first time and you're wondering what it's all about, take some time to find out more about Jesus. 
take some time to find out what it means that God loves you so much that he sent his son into the world to die for you so that you could start a new life, so that you could be forgiven, so that you could know your Father God, his strength, his life, his goodness, his companionship, that you could become a new creation because Jesus died on the cross for you. You can call out to him now if you want to do that. Let's just say a prayer in case you want to do that. If you want to, you're listening to this now or live or, or some other time and you really want to follow him, this is what you need to do. Jesus said, repent. Admit your need that you need him. Tell him, Lord, I can see that I'm hostile in my mind towards you and I'm not following you. But I can also see how wonderful you are that you would give up everything for me and die on a cross in order that I could be forgiven and changed. Lord, I, I, I admit the things that are wrong in my life. I know where I'm at, but I believe in you. Lord, I want to live for you. So come and forgive me. Come and cleanse me. Come into my life. I want to receive you and I want to be your child. I turn from everything that I know is wrong. So accept me into your family and cleanse me and forgive me and give me your Holy Spirit that I may follow you and walk with you every day of my life. Amen. And if you want to renew your, your relationship with him, let's just, let's just come to him now. Let's come and confess whatever it is that you know is missing at the moment or oh, just the feeling that I'm stuck. Lord, we come to you just as we are right now. Lord, you know that none of us is kind of running along this path. But we want to. We want to be increasing in our knowledge of you. You know, those of us who are stuck, and where we're stuck, Lord, I just pray you'll come now with your great love, with your power of your spirit to, um, to change our hearts and our minds around again so that we see how wonderful you are, so we see the great treasure we have in you, so that we would fall in love with you again and be able to start walking on this path again. I thank you that you're not waiting for us to have done the checklist of 10 things that we have to get right before you'll take our hand and lead us along this road. Thank you that you've done it already. Thank you that the price is paid, that, that it's done, it's finished. Thank you for your grace, which gives us what we don't deserve. Thank you for your mercy for giving us we don't deserve that either. Lord Jesus, come and refresh our minds. Come and renew our minds so that we can follow you with joy. With joy and thanksgiving. So that we'll be increasing in power in order to have that joy in the face of challenge and of difficulty day by day. In the face of the battle that we're facing right now. Lord, help us. We want to recommit to you and we want to follow you and we want to follow you all the days of our life. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus from this time onwards, Lord. We say we want to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go back and read some of those verses. And spend a bit of time with Jesus today. Maybe take them through this week and, and look at Second Peter chapter 1 as well and um, read what, what he says to the people he writes to. Uh, may God take you by the hand and lead you on this path and get you walking again. Yeah. Amen. Well, I don't think we really need to add much to that, to be honest. Uh, that was on my mind this morning when I read First Peter. I didn't even know what Tim was going to preach about. 
Well, it makes me think, you know, we've got to carry on walking. We've got to carry on walking. And sometimes we will. We will fall. We won't fail because Christ already accomplished us. But we only fail if we don't get back up again. Peter, uh, Jesus handpicked both Peter and Judas. And they both let him down. He sent them on a commission. Go to the lost sheep of Israel, heal the sick, raise the dead, and spread the good news of the gospel. Both of them let him down, though. Seriously let him down. But what's the difference between Judas and Peter? Both tried to make amends to some degree. Peter even, Judas even took the money back to the temple. But Judas didn't get back up. They both fell. Only Peter got back up and repented. It's, as Tim said, it's not, this isn't the basis of our salvation. We produce fruits. It's not the basis of our salvation. We're already saved. But fruits are the barometer. Faith is the basis of our salvation. Fruit is the barometer of our salvation, the measurement. We will produce good works. Not by our own, not by our own works, not by our own thing, but we will want to produce works. This is a sign of maturity. This is what it's about. This is why we keep on walking in Christ. My notices have gone. Did you move the paper? <laughs> okay. I'm just going to pray for the service now, then I'll do the notices. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Father God, I just want, you to, want people to be able to take that home today, Lord, what, what they've learned today, and be able to apply it to their lives, Lord. This is your valuable word we've heard today. Lord, let it affect every inch of us. Let us not go away the same, Lord, but... But really take it in, Lord, and come and take it with us throughout the week and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I'm going to, oh, I better put these on. I'm going to do the notices. Okay, what's the first one? Food bank. Okay. Don't forget to buy a little extra food when you go shopping. Um, you know, they always run out of this food bank. So we, we do need, whenever you can afford to, we know times are really hard now for everybody, everybody. But there might be a time when we need it. We don't know. So we, when, we have, when we've got things coming in, try and give a little extra if you can, if you can. The next one, please. Who's missing? Okay, so if, you, if you've noticed someone's not been here for a few weeks, give them a call. See how you're getting on, you know, uh, what's happening. Don't, not to badger them to come to church, but just to find out what's happening in their lives, because we just don't know. I think people come to church, you know, and they're more likely to tell their problems to their colleagues at work than their Christian friends, because it doesn't make them look quite that holy, does it? <laughs> and we're all guilty of it. But if there's someone here, or someone missing rather, and you haven't seen them for a while, give them a call, just to find out if they're okay. Can we have the next one, please? Oh, yeah, the Christmas cards at the back, one pound a pack. It's Christmas soon. Uh, I don't know how long we've, how many years we've had them, but they need to go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one pound a pack's not too bad. So if, if you know any people and you want to send them cards, you get some from here. Okay, the next one, please. Late night Sunday, I think that's the youth thing. That's sort of like games and fellowship and things like that. And that's on Sunday, the 20th of November. Today. It's today. So don't be like Tim and leave it till after the fact before you decide to go. <laughs> Plan now to go, okay? Okay, come on to the next one, please. Walk of Witness, that's coming up soon. I think the meeting's... Are, not the Walk of Witness in today. The meeting's today. <laughs> The Walk of Witnesses is coming up soon. So we've got this um, meeting at uh, New Testament Church of God, that's George Street, and that's at 6.30 today. <laughs> and I think the discussion will be, how has the Walk of Witnesses impacted you? How has it impacted you? Okay, and I think we've got the last one now, is it? Christmas meal? A Christmas meal, okay. So there's going to be a Christmas meal at the Red Leaf Village. I believe I've been there before. I have. Okay, I have. I've been there before. It's, the food is quite nice, actually. So if you want to go to that, it's £19.99 a person, children ten ninety nine, And that'll be one th one one thirty on the 11th of December. So if anyone wants to go to that, um, I don't know who you see. Do you see um, Rapinda? See Rapinda uh, to book a place. And I think that's the lot. <laughs>